You are listening to Claret and Blue, an Aston Villa podcast brought to you by Birmingham Live. Hello and welcome back to the Clown Blue Podcast. My name's Dan Rowan, so I'm joined this afternoon by John Townley at the lovely Hockley Social Club. Uh, thanks for them for letting us film here today. We've got plenty of content coming up on the channel, so subscribe to uh, see it first. That's, that's the first plug. Today's video, John, is going to be about Alex Moreno. Now, we want to talk about him specifically. First of all, how good he is as a player, which we could probably spend half an hour on, uh, about. But secondly, what it means for kind of Emery's transfer policy, I guess, for, for want of a better phrase. So first of all, talk to me about Moreno, the player. How good has he been and what kind of impact has he had on Villa so far? I think he's had a huge impact. Um, I suppose, in a way, transformational. Um, you, I don't think we would have expected that as yeah. soon as we signed him or judging that we was, you know, linked with a left-back or Emery wanted a left-back, you wouldn't have thought that a 29-year-old coming out of Spain would have such an impact on, on the team, especially at that stage of Emery's reign because we'd only played two games, hadn't we? We'd beaten Brighton and United. Yeah. But you would have thought Luca Dean would have had some sort of renaissance in a Villa shirt, and that would, you know, and that would cover us at least all the summer, until um, until he wanted to get someone else who was maybe, you know, even better than Dean. But obviously Moreno has proved that he's more than capable of being a key player in this in the in the squad, and yeah, he's been everything you want from a modern left back as such, you know, maybe this is what Antonio Luna <laughs> should have been all those years ago. He plays as a winger, doesn't he? We all know that when when we go forward, at least in this sort of current uh, Emery side, he'll play as a, that left winger and it will be balanced up by uh, like a Buende or Bailey pushing over to the right to balance, uh, you know, Watkins, Bailey, uh, Moreno, yeah. Young will kind of tuck back ever so slightly into almost like a back three shape. Uh, so yeah, everything is almost worked through it's in Moreno's getting so much joy because, you know, imagine if you're Moreno and you've been told, oh, Villa want you, okay, you know, where are they? They're in, you know, the bottom off the table, but they've got Emery. And then Emery says to you, oh, by the way, you'll be like a key player for my team. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure you would have thought, oh, wow, really? <laughs> you know, again, as we'll go on, it speaks volumes of how Emery can spot players, not only that he's worked with, but players that have been in leagues that he's in. Um, he's always thinking about football, we know that, but to spot, a certain type of player and think, oh, when I take over at my next club or whatever, I'm going to look and think the left back is going to be this important, even though I've already got players who are, you know, £30 million wingers or whatever it may be, top midfielders, but the left back is going to have that much of an important role. Yeah. It's quite something to... Uh, I wouldn't have expected the impact that he's had so far to have happened so quickly. You might have thought Marion might go on to be a good player for Villa, but maybe next season and he'll come on, come in at the moment for a lesser fee in comparison to most transfers these days. I mean, 13 million isn't exactly cheap, but for a Premier League footballer, it is. Maybe he'll just be back up to Luca Dean for the rest of the season and, and we'll, we'll carry on from there. But I'd love to have like a little tactics ball kind of thing in front of us at the moment because I was watching on TV last night for Fulham and obviously it's a, a different angle to that I'm used to sat in Villa Park. And that switch that you mentioned of, of Young dropping in to be a back three and you kind of say it's almost a back three. At times it very much is. Yeah. Young, Mings, Concer are a three. Moreno is far up the other side next to Ollie Watkins or whoever as the most forward player at times. And that kind of positional switch, I guess, it's not. I don't want to say like the run we're on is down to Alex Moreno because it isn't because there's loads of factors going on. But the way Emery wants to play, Luca Dean... He, had thought, he thought at least couldn't do that so he had to go and sign a player to, to make an impact so for 13 million for him to come on, and, uh, come on and do the job that he's done already I don't feel like we'd have had this run that we're on at the moment I don't know whether this is going out before United I hope it is because at the moment we're un- unbeaten in 10 and I don't want that fact to be wrong by the time this comes out but having Moreno there I think I think has allowed that winning run to happen to an extent because he's so key to us going forward that, exactly I think that's the point and the amount of crosses that we put into the box amount of um and his delivery is great as well absolutely and but again it's a different profile and that's the first thing emery said he was he said um and he was i'm, I'm glad that he was so honest about it at the time because it puts dean you know it, it, no one's in the dark then it's okay augustinson you can go because oh, i forgot about him <laughs> yeah you're the same profile as luca dean in a way you know you're not going to gallop up and down the wings and we've heard it before that luca dean is like a sort of stand and cross player which is fine but for emery he wants a player who can get to the byline because it's not only pulling back crosses, it's combining with players in that position, so a Jacob Ramsey or a Watkins retaining possession at that higher pitch. Because for example, against Fulham and other games, we'll you know bypass the press and we'll just be playing football in their half. And that's exactly what we want to do. Yeah. And that's because Moreno's playing that high. You know, Mings can push out onto that left side almost, find passes, um, and Concer and Younger almost, as you say, more um, defensive. 
but that's why he's been so effective because it's not just he's getting to the byline of whipping crosses and getting loads of assists. It's because he can play as it the almost the like team. a midfielder, I suppose. I know we're calling it a winger, but he's very good in possession. I mean, he's, he's a Spanish fullback that Emery has spotted. He's going to be a good footballer, and he is that. So, yeah, the, the shape that, as you say, the shape that we play, you'd almost want to see it as like the average positions and stuff. We don't have it like to put on the screen, I don't think, but. If you watch Villa, that's how it looks, and um, and it works really well because we have, let's say, the right players to do that. If we ask Luca Dean to do it, it might work, but Moreno's proven that those little, you know, no one would have thought we would have signed a left back in January, but because we have, we've probably got maybe six more points than what, yeah. maybe even more. Who knows? Um, but yeah, that's why it's a transformational signing. Yeah, and electric pace as well, which is dangerous to any team regardless of the style of play where maybe sometimes it's a little bit slower and you've got to build up and be patient when you do turn and you go right we're now going to go through the motions to have someone with Morano's pace flying down that left side that's massive as well yeah and I don't think we had that in the squad anyway we not that we were a slow team by any means because I don't think we're very athletic and we're you know quite powerful but I think Leon Bailey was the only one who could probably get through uh, 10 yards um, or 10 metres, sorry, you know, in a relatively quick time in comparison to other Premier League uh, players. But again, Leon Bailey is, you know, he's struggled with injuries and he's, um, he hasn't quite believed in his body, I don't think, over the last couple of years. We had like, enough confidence to, to break lines and we saw it against Forrest, as soon as he did it, he, I think he might have pulled a hamstring. So to have a player that's willing to do that all the time for different reasons, to pin their defenders back to retain possession higher up the pitch to get balls in the box there's different reasons why his pace is so important and for recovery speed as well against Brentford he was caught out at the back post when uh, I forget who it was I think it was Kevin Shard pulls the ball across the box from Buemo Moreno hasn't quite checked his shoulder but he's got enough recovery speed to um, stop him scoring an open goal so there's different reasons why his game is so important to how we play um, and that's something that Villa, us as Villa fans wouldn't have spotted but if Emery can spot that in one player that's a left back to do that across the team is um, yeah very exciting. Yeah, and away from you know Moreno, the player and what he brings to the on the pitch, it's almost like he's like the shining example of what Emery can do. If like we said on a, let, an example, yeah, yeah. let him cook, let him do his own things. He'll, he'll decide not not that he's kind of got to run the place, but it is that feel. Obviously, the scouts and they'll contribute and say here's a list of players that we think are, are worthy. But you still think Emery's got the final decision on whether he wants them in his side and in, in his system. But if you go, right, he signed John Duran, who's not really featured much and maybe is a, a bit of a club signing, but he signed one player who's playing in the side every week in Moreno and he's that good yeah. for that little cost, really, and has had such an impact on the overall system. You think, well, there's a lot of talk about like a big transfer window and, and spending big and you have to go and spend 100 million, 150 million to compete. And yes, the law of averages suggests you do have to spend a lot of money to, to get into the top, top ends of the Premier League. But if... Emery can find another five Morenos and spend 70 million instead of 150 million. You trust him to go, well, if he's done that with one player, go and do that with the rest of them. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. And I don't doubt that's what we'll do. I think there's obviously, you know, I, I would expect us to be spending about 100 million or maybe even more this uh, summer. Maybe just because that's on, for example, two players that cost about that. For example, like, I don't know, Nico Williams might be um, 40 million, should we say. Yeah. I know he's got a release clause of 50, but it's. 12 months left on his deal. But you're right, for example, um, Giovanni La Celso, Villa have been linked to, and Emery's clearly keen on, he'd worked with him at Villarreal, sort of, again, rejuvenated his career uh, away from Tottenham. And Villa fans might have looked at that pre-Emery and thought, oh, well, he didn't do well at Tottenham. We're, you know, supposedly maybe Better finishing above them, them yeah. because of Emery, granted, but we want players that are going to come in and uh, hit the ground running and do this a bit. We can now trust Emery and say, well, this player might not have had a brilliant time in uh, the Premier League or in Moreno's case, not played in there at all. And let's be honest, no one really know who he was, but we'll trust him. And that's exactly what the Villa board are going to do. We talk a lot at the moment about the way we play under Emery has been a, a bit of education for, for fans, in the, especially if you go to the stadium and you're watching every game, you know, you're kind of having to get used to a new style of play. And you, you do feel like if, if you watch an Emery game and you watch them for a prolonged period of time, you do think, I'm learning stuff here. It's not just like an entertainment thing anymore. Like, I understand that he's trying to do this and I'm now seeing it I almost feel like the Moreno signing is, is can be a bit of a learning lesson for people as well to go like you said how many people have heard of him watching this 10% 20% maybe I hadn't I don't know whether you had maybe our jobs permit that we should have known more than, than the average fan you'd have looked at him on 13 million player from Spain Raul Betis <sighs> Is he going to be good enough for the Premier League? And it's just a, a nothing signing. But again, it's a, I feel like it's a bit of an education to go, well, if Emery wants that player, 
there's a good reason for it so be educated trust it and, and it's a bit of a crap phrase but trust the process i'm going to commit to this podcast coming out before man united so there's this there'll be a man united preview then we play man united on sundays there'll be a post-match show there as well so far as of time of recording we've uploaded a video every single day in april i'm going to try and commit that we're going to do that for the rest of the month as well which means there's another few days to fill subscribe to the carpenter youtube channel you'll see that content first thank you for sticking with us and watching all of our stuff thanks to john for speaking to me this morning and we'll see you again very soon Thank you for listening to Claret and Blue, an Aston Villa podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, then please do let us know. We love hearing your thoughts and comments. We'll be back soon with another episode, but until then, up the villa. Up the villa.